But I, I want to tell you something, dude. What's up? I don't remember how many years it was. This was a while back. I was, uh, I think I had just gotten into Toast and Abbasi. Just like, I was like, what the hell is this guy doing on the guitar? This is nuts. And um, I was watching videos from uh, Nam. I can't remember, or Nam, however you say it. I can't remember which year it was. And there was this guy watching Toast and Abbasi, right? Yeah. Like mesmerized, dude. Mesmerized. Was really, like, uh, Toast and was like, uh, like doing a little performance or whatever. And this guy was bobbing his head. And uh, a couple of years passed, and that guy pops up uh, on my U- uh, on my YouTube and my suggested. Do you know who that guy was, dude? <laughs> Ooh, I, it wasn't me. It was you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's crazy, and I and I, I remember you, uh, which is which is nuts. And it's cool to see. Like um, I don't know where you were back then, but it looks like you've made uh, quite some strides since. Yeah, I I know the exact video you're talking about. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is crazy. That's wild. Yeah, what? I remember that because I didn't think I, dude, I had no idea any of that was going to happen. And there's a lot of people that kind of like knew who I was just from watching it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that I was in the like shot. I was, I just wanted to be like, I wanted to. The reason why I stood right there is because they have a speaker. There was like a speaker and I could hear Tosin play. And I was like, Oh, you wanted all of it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You wanted to be immersed. (laughs) That's funny. I had a a similar thing happen to me in childhood. Uh, I do origami. It's kind of a a nerdy thing. No, that's Uh, sick. When I was a kid, I went to uh, the convention. And they were filming some, like, origami documentary there, uh, like, one year. And then the next year, they were selling it in the same spot. It was on PBS, and I was watching it. And I was in it. I was like, what the fuck? I didn't even remember them <laughs> recording me, dude. It's, like, in my face as a child. It's pretty it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, funny stuff. But, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the music discussion. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I, I, I thought that was really, uh, that was really funny, you know? Yeah, nah, yeah, yeah, it is really funny, and I'm glad that people enjoyed it. I That was a good performance. I really liked, um, I thought it sounded good, too, because uh, it was put in, in, like, context with, like, the Obasi guitar and, and the Neural plugin, so. Right. Yeah, yeah he, so. He, he's dope, man. It's really cool what he's doing. Yeah, well. And to anyone that's watching, I'm Ando San, and this has been Seraphin. That's how you pronounce your last name, right? Seraphin? Yep, you, you got it right. Yep. Yeah, Ben Seraphin, and he's a really awesome YouTuber. Uh, I really love your content, dude. Like, I really love your content. I think it's something that the guitar community needs. You're talking about a, a lot of, like, niche topics that do not get touched upon, and it's something it's stuff that I've been thinking about for a really long time. And pretty much what Ben does, he goes into like deep dives in, in, in the guitar community and just like how the, how the internet has influenced the guitar. You go in through the, the business ethics of it. And it's just really cool. I, you guys should definitely check out his content because it's, it's really great. Thanks man. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Where, where are you from by the way? Um, I, I normally tell people I'm based like right outside of uh, New York, but uh, I live in Connecticut, so I'm on, on the polar opposite end of you. You're out in Cali, I think. Yeah. Okay, I see. And then, like, what's your background in music? I assume you play guitar. Yep, yep. So I've been playing guitar for 17 or 18 years now. Um, Never really went, like, professional with it never really had the desire to um my uh my childhood best friend's mom like she really nurtured everything that I was interested I'm very lucky for that uh he ended up picking up drums when he was like 10 or 11 and then soon after she got me a bass guitar and then um I got an uh, electric guitar acoustic guitar and then she enrolled me in lessons so I pretty much like Pretty much from then on, I just, like, played nonstop. And uh, he went off to go to Berkeley, 
and uh, I was like trying to figure out what the hell it was that I was going to do and uh, started giving guitar lessons during my uh, time in university and thought like, hey, maybe I should do the band thing. And then I was like, yeah, may maybe not. So uh, I kind of like screwed myself over. And this is what um, kind of uh, made me uh, start making these types of videos. Like I kind of convinced myself that there was no future in music because there was no money in it. So even though it was something that I really enjoyed, I kept on like telling myself that it's not possible. So I ended up getting an internship at a recording studio uh, in Times Square, New York. And they, um, they started to teach me social media marketing. And then I went off into the startup world uh, doing marketing work, sales work. And uh, like after years and years of doing that, like, I started to, like, really hate the position that I put myself in. Uh, and I, like, completely stopped playing guitar, stopped playing for three years. And I got to a point where I was like, this sucks. Why the hell did I do this to myself? How many other people do this to themselves? I'm learning all this stuff. Maybe I can be like Robin Hood and take some of the things I've learned um, and bring it to, to guitar players so they can have a better insight and understanding of how to navigate the, the digital space. So that's kind of what spawned the whole thing. But as far as like pursuing anything as like a, a, a musician, I don't know if that's really, if I'm, if I'm built for that. <laughs> mm, I hear that, man. And that's it's cool. Incredible. And, dude, what? you, but I feel like the information, that, information that you talk about in your videos is very valuable. And, and there are things that young musicians should think about or young guitar players should think about, especially in the space of just like prog guitar and and whatnot. And um, like I was just watching one of your videos and you were just talking about this is it's the video why every guitar player on social media is better than you. Yeah. And the things the things you were talking about there is just thing like stuff that, you know, modern guitar players should hear. Mm -hmm. And shit right. kind of absorb in their brain. Right. I, I, and, you know, even though, like, as far as being a professional musician, I just know that's not my calling. Well, the mm -hmm. same way you know what your calling is to, um, uh, to, to pursue music professionally and create art in, in that way, in that medium, and bring it out into the world. Um, I just know that's not what I'm meant to do. Maybe my my the way I'm supposed to contribute to that in some way. I don't I don't know yet. Um but with that particular video, I mean these are just things that you learn over time. Um this is kind of a <laughs> a funny story. Um in college I was I always had like kind of like a natural um so I had like an aptitude for guitar. So uh, I was able to get to, like, a pretty decent point with, like, pretty bad practice habits. And my junior year of college, I took this class that was called Guitar One. And the the professor, God bless him, Professor Dina, thank you for dealing with me. I was a terrible student. Um, I would show up to class and literally just noodle, like, while the professor talked. It was so bad. I look back on it. I'm like, Ben, why did you do that? That's so embarrassing. But, like, I kind of had this reputation around campus for being, like, the guitar guy. I was good. I could I could never really play what I wanted to play. You know what I mean? But I could play a, a lot of stuff. And um, the end of the year comes by, and Dina says, um, hey, if you guys want to go to Guitar 2 next year, you have to come to my office and um, and talk to me about it. I have to give you uh, permission. And I was like, oh, yeah, easy. There are all these kids in the class. They had just started playing guitar for the first time. I'm like, there's no way I'm not going to get into guitar, too. So I see there's a line. I go. And uh, one guy walked out. He had just started playing guitar. And he comes out. He's like, yes. Oh, Ben, you're totally going to get it. I can't wait to be in this class with you next year. I'm like, bet, you know. And then I walk into the office. And Professor Dina looks at me. He's like, what are you doing? Here? Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Uh, one of the best things that ever happened to me, he said, Ben, you're, you, you can play guitar, but you're a terrible student. There's not anything that I can, I can teach you. And like, um, at that point in time, I was like, he's right. 
and I'd like done Google searches and like I knew I was on a plateau, but I didn't really want to accept it. So that same day, like I went back to my dorm and I um I opened up my my laptop and I went to this this YouTube channel called How to Practice Guitar. And like my love for the instrument, I think this was like 2013, maybe 2000, no, 2011, something like that. My love for the guitar like completely came back. And like, I realized so many things because I had like kind of like an elitist view of music. And I, 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 you know, it's like, I don't even know how to explain it. But it's like that one experience, I'm so thankful for it. It like completely reshaped how I saw the instrument and my relationship to it. So that particular video was kind of inspired by that, that particular moment and like the years after where I like actually started to practice correctly and like learn to really enjoy the instrument. And I think a lot of people beat themselves up because they see, they see these players. It's like, you know, I'm reading this book. It's called the magic in your mind by, um, by some guy, I don't remember who, but Steve Vai recommended the book in some interview. And uh, in that particular interview, he talks about the ego and how, like, it causes a lot of misery and, and a lot of pain. And he says, like, we're always in this game of comparison. Why do we need to compare ourselves to others? Things are just different. So somebody might see some person shredding on social media and it hurts their ego. Why? You know, there's no reason for that. It's just it's different. That person is expressing themselves, expressing themselves the best way that they believe that they know how to, you know what I mean? And they're getting fulfillment and enjoyment out of it. Why does it matter um, what they're doing? And I think it's, a, it's ad admirable because you can take that and apply it to yourself and your own playing and begin to really get like serious joy and fulfillment out of the instrument, you know? I don't know if what I said made sense or if that even answered your question. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, man. Uh, yeah, the ego is definitely a killer. It, it, it can kill joy. It really can. And it can take no away it, it can take away from like your the actual love of the instrument. It can make you hate it, too. Um, right. Yeah, I think growing up for me, because I've been around a lot of like really amazing players all my life. And I think I've just gotten used to just seeing people that are better than me. But it also just, I feel like it just kind of inspired me um, to play, you know, to, to get better at my instrument. And I was very fortunate enough just to grow up with the amount of people that I did grow up with that took their took guitar seriously. And um, I'm, I'm all self-taught. So, and uh, a lot of my friends, you know, went, got like formal teaching and like went to school for guitar and stuff so that kind of helped me as well because i right. saw i saw the other side and like i kind of understand it too and um what you're saying i i completely understood what you were talking about it's it's, it's the truth man what's the book called again uh, it's called the magic in your mind the magic in your mind yeah it's real it's, it's some heavy stuff <laughs> But uh, um, I, I wanted to ask you something. Um, so, and, and I think this goes back to it, right? Because like your mindset is so important with this sort of stuff. So you saw, you said that you're around, growing up, you're around all these people that were, uh, you you would consider them better. We'll put that in quotation marks, different, but you know, they could yeah. play things that maybe you couldn't play yet, you know? <laughs> I mean, and you're yeah. extremely proficient at the guitar. I mean, you're, you're incredible, dude. Oh, thank and, you, man. <laughs> do you think that, that, your approach, maybe putting that ego aside and looking at, um, looking at like, hey, these guys, look, this is the situation they're in. You know, maybe if I put my guard down and I open myself to be able to learn, uh, learn from them. Do you think that's what allowed you to to get to the level that yeah, you are today? Definitely. You know, the biggest thing for me was I just had fun, man. It was so much fun, like. <laughs> I just had so much fun. Like I wasn't thinking about anything else. Like I just got excited when I saw people like saw people just like doing insane stuff. Like I remember the turning point for me was when I went to Nam and mm -hmm. I was 18, I was like 18 or 17 years old. And um at that time I started playing guitar when I was 16. 
actually 15 because I saw Animals as Leaders live and that made me want to like take guitar very seriously. I saw them I live. I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I saw yeah, Animals. I the, yeah, the influence that could have on a person. That's crazy. Dude. Yeah, I saw them live for the first time. That was the first time I heard their music. It was Summer Slaughter uh, Tour and AEL was on there and that changed my life. And um, so 15, uh, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, I was like three years in playing guitar mm -hmm. and like I went to NAMM and I was just like, that made me realize I wanted to be like a musician. Like I wanted to do it as like a career because I was just surrounded by like a bunch of insane players and it just made me feel really good because I don't know. It's like, I don't know, just seeing people just like love their instruments so much influenced me. I hope that answered your question. And it just, I was just having fun when I was younger. Like I didn't take it too seriously. I was just having fun. Right. No, right. I, think, I think that's the most important thing regardless. I think if you enjoy it, if you enjoy the process, and especially being around other musicians, it's such a, I feel like that's something that, that really doesn't get uh, talked about that much. Like, I think, I don't know if you've ever heard of School of Rock. Uh, it's like this music program all across the U.S. where like they mm -hmm. take uh, kids and like teach them like performance. Uh, they can get music lessons and stuff like that. My my childhood best friend was in that growing up, and he, I mean, he he's disgusting on the drums. And I I never I, I was never in school of rock or anything like that. But when I got to to college, I surrounded myself with a ton of musicians, and it's just like there's like a I don't even know how to explain it, dude. You know what I'm talking about? It's like being around that, being around that culture, it pushes you. It makes yeah. you. It makes you. You're you're picking up what other people are learning, like what you said earlier about like uh, with your with your childhood. It's really that's such an important thing for a musician, man. It yeah. really is. Yeah, man. And you know what's crazy? I feel like I like sort of lost a bit of that as I got older. And it could be I think one of the reasons why I lost some of it is because of the just music industry as a whole. Like I've been doing music full time for five years now, mm -hmm. and like now, I would say I'm 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 starting to realize the effects it had on me, um, mm -hmm. and like how it kind of sucked some of the joy out of like how I just loved writing songs and making riffs. Like now, and it's almost like a chore, and I had to pull it back. I remember you were you actually talked about it. There's a video. You, there's a video that I watched and I was like, you're just hitting every, which one was it? Damn, I can't believe I made that many mistakes. <laughs> you made that many mistakes? You didn't make oh, any I, mistakes. I, like, uh, like to have like certain perspectives. I think we all kind of go through the same things in life. It's just, it looks different. Yeah. So the, how social media traps guitar players, a response to Jared. That was a really good video. That's the video that I'm talking about. And, you know, that all that stuff has had an effect on me, it had a yeah. huge effect on me. Because, you know, when you're trying to make a career out of this and you're trying to be successful and stuff, you get obsessed with the vanity metrics that you were talking about in, um, yeah. in one of your videos. And, like, that that sucks the soul out, out of everything, you know? And, like, trying to just break it down and get back into like the love and, and the art, the artistry of your instrument rather right. than, um, you know, just succumbing to the social media game and whatnot. Right. And uh, it's, it's a very, very interesting, it has been a very interesting journey for me, like the last couple of months, because like I've been going through a lot of imposter syndrome and, and a lot of other things. And, I, I'm just been oh, bro, you're killing it. <laughs> and I, and just... I, I know, I know the feeling. I don't want to, I don't want to downplay <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Look, yeah. I've been there. It's, it's how it is, dude. You know what I mean? I think it's always important to just always remind yourself, like, think like a year back, two years back. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's always important to just all try to put things in the perspective. Uh, you're, you're touching on some really cool points, like. In what ways do you think, like, the music industry um, started to, like, 
slowly like take the the joy away away from your craft away from your art yeah i think the number one thing was when like i i like i couldn't be too relaxed about it i had to take it a little bit more seriously mm-hmm. than than most other musicians that don't do it full time because now that i'm doing it full time you know i have to rely on this to pay my rent and my bills so right. there is a bit of stress on like okay well i have to meet a certain quota a certain amount of money a month to cover just this amount of bills right um you have to make so, different types of decisions yes and so that took away from the freedom that i would usually have as just you know run in the mill just musician that doesn't do anything that requires like money or gaining any sort of income right Um, so that was the first step but then also like on the flip side now the way that i'm seeing it it's like well that's the type of freedom that i've always wanted like right right that's the type of freedom that all like the fact that i can even make money doing just playing the guitar that's pretty rad dude (laughs) yeah it's like that's crazy like that's that's insane like that so i try and i i this is just something recent that i've come up with in my head i'm like okay like it took me five years to get to this point of thinking like god damn but I'm I'm here now, and I'm starting to kind of kind of understand it a little bit more. If that makes right, any that's, sense, that's, that's dope. That's a that's a you know a lot of people, and that's with anything. And you know that particular video I chose social media. Social media is just like a, it's just an extension of 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 the world. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. think it's uh, maybe I maybe it's not my place to say. I really don't know. But, you know, a lot of what we're seeing through social media is like a societal change. And um, like a lot of times we kind of get told, you know, this is what you need to be successful. This is what success looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, I think success is just being fulfilled. You know, if you can if you can wake up in the morning and go to sleep and go like I did what what makes me joyful i did what i feel is important i think that's like the the the, like the foundation and the starting place but you get to this point and and you see i mean it's i'm not going to go too into detail with it but you know people are starting to prioritize different things and you know through means like social media tv radio all these different things we start to think that those are the things that we need and we prioritize those things instead of things that really are important to us and maybe we start to feel bad about what we're where we're at and what we're doing and i see that so much i get a lot of like um like uh guitar related ads or like guitars that are like running ads or whatever on instagram and like i'll reach out because i like i just like to meet new people talk to people and I ask them like, hey, like, why are you running ads? And they're just like, I'm trying to get to twenty thousand followers. Mm. Why? You know, and I've I've heard stuff like that so much. It's like you don't even not to judge, but it's like if you got what's important to you, what does that help you do? Why is that yeah. meaningful to you? Because mm-hmm. if you're just chasing those numbers to compare yourself to X, Y, and Z guitars, oh man, yeah. you're <laughs> you're in for a rude awakening like you're gonna wake up one day and be like oh fuck what the hell did i what the hell yeah. did i do you know what i mean yeah man that video okay so i think that's the stuff you're talking about was of the secret strategy behind it was either the polyphia one or the how tim henson got rich playing the guitar mm-hmm. i'm trying to remember but and also i think it's how social media trap guitar players and, and, and whatnot you were talking just about like how uh click conversion rate and like how you know having this x y and z many followers doesn't really equate to you garnering the type of income that you would think you would get and there could be someone that has two thousand followers that makes way more money than a person than a person that has 20 and that's the truth like yeah it's crazy (laughs) dude it is crazy man it's absolutely insane like i it's it's fucking wild and 
a lot of people don't know that though. Like a lot no, of people, they don't, they'll judge based off of of, of followers. Yeah, it was, look, there was there was business before there was social media. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Cu customers are they're they're invisible. But yeah, man. Like, oh, that's maybe that's not the right the right terminology. But you know, it's you only see a certain thing through social media, mm -hmm. and you know, and this not to discredit um like um, certain artists. And I, I don't mean this in a facetious way at all. This was just a topic on the internet yeah. uh, some years back. But I don't know if you're familiar with the artist uh, Smoke Perp. Yeah, Smoke Perp. Yep. He, he, I mean, he's got, I don't even know. He's got to have over a million followers. But they they were clowning him. And I think this is off. I don't even think people should do this. This is regardless of who the artist is. Uh, but they were clowning him for, for record sales because of how many followers he had. He had, like, sold such a like infant like it's such a small it wasn't a small number i think it was actually a pretty big number but you know how people are when they judge this sort of stuff yeah um but it was like a a smaller number of record sales and they were they were they were clowning him and it's like i think he kind of because he prioritized the vanity metric so much both him and little pump instead of like focusing on the music they had kind of become like online comedians yeah. So the, the the audience that they were they they were catering to and that they were growing didn't necessarily care about their art. They cared about them as comedians. So mm -hmm. when uh, when uh, Smoke Perp went and dropped that record and it and it and it sold, um, it didn't really uh, you know the, the compared to the followers, whatever the hell that means. Yeah. Um, they it kind of was it was kind of small comparatively. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, it's horrible that he got clowned for that. But it, I mean, it's who, who, like the audience is like such an important thing. It's like if you can resonate with a group of people, like not because like, uh, and I used to like, because uh, I, I, I did marketing work, and I used to like pick things and whatever. And I got to a point. One of my buddies, he, uh, he, he like tried starting like twenty something businesses. Ex. Uh, uh, Google engineer and then like all of them failed and then he said screw this I'm just going to do what I love what am I interested about what do I want to bring into the world and he he made a, a VR basketball game, game it's called Big Baller and he like it worked out because he like put everything aside he just decided what was what was important to him and when I look back at some of the decisions I made dude I was willing to get guitar away I stopped playing for years I actually sold all my guitars at one point, which mm. was like like horrible because I, I thought like I literally in my mind I was telling me telling myself I need like the fastest cars, I need I need to live in X, Y, and Z type of house. You know what I mean? And it just mm -hmm. it crushes you, dude. It, it crushes it crushes you. It I does. don't know I don't know how I got to that point, but I feel like I needed to say that. No, I understand. I understand. I mean I Dude, I feel the same way. I uh, some of the things that you were talking about actually, and um, what's this video? Yeah, why the every guitar player on social media is better than you is like kind of just like, you know, taking inspiration from these players and and not envying them, like you know, right? Because everyone's born with different circumstances, and that's like out of your control. So like right. something that you can control is the outlook of it. And like, that's, that's very important because, you know, I, I didn't grow up, I grew up poor and I didn't really have a lot of, you know, cash, you know, growing that's up. Same, even, dude. Yeah. So Get even, your parents, all that. <laughs> yeah. So even now, like I, the fact that I live in this like one bedroom apartment, even though I do wish it was bigger, I mean, but it's, it's all come from you know, from music and, you know, also my partner as well. But mm -hmm. like, and if I think about how, where I was, you know, how you mentioned, like think about the like, two years ago or five years ago, like how, where I was five years ago, like this is a big up for me. So right. it's just, it's all like a matter of perspective, but also understanding. I feel like it's also important to understand like, the differences in life and in life and just like how people come up in life because that that can also dictate their character and the way they view things like, right so 
It's very interesting. And that's something I talk about a lot, too. Like, I talk about, like, you know, because if, if you really break it down and you look at look at the history of... So now we're getting into something that a lot of people don't really talk about. But, like, if you think about, like, how Misha grew up and, like, and like how he kind of had, like, a leg up. And then also, if you think about it, I think... What's the other... So there's three guitar players in Periphery. Uh, Mark Holcomb and uh, Jake Bowen. Yeah, Jake Bowen. He's like somehow related to John. Yeah, I think he's uh, John Petrucci's cousin. <laughs> so the, it, the, it just seems like they were just like destined for um, <laughs> for success. Like right. it, pretty much all the all the things were just laid out for them. And then also, so another thing that I think is very interesting about like that era of guitar players is that. It seemed like it was very serendipitous because Tosin, Misha, all those guys knew each other. Ash, the owner of Sumerian Records, used to be in the band with Tosin Abasi. Like mm -hmm. it seemed like they were all in the right place at the right time, and it created like this slurry of success. It was very interesting. Like right. I don't know if you like really like look into that era, like Periphery. Yeah, yeah, and Periphery is my favorite band of all time. So. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty familiar. You know, it's I see what you're saying. Um it, this stuff is complicated. It is very about. complicated to talk about. It, <laughs> it, it, like it, it, how do it's like how do you and you're right, right? I think, you know, we all come into the world with different circumstances. Like but it like, you know circumstances really don't mean anything mm -hmm. and i think we yeah. kind of put a block in front of ourselves uh when we when we think about things in terms of circumstance i think periphery even though i mean they are incredibly and they this is their words i don't normally like to use the word uh lucky um you know but you know different people have different viewpoints on the world um, and, and I guess luck is one way of describing a certain part of life that I don't know mm. if we really understand it or not. Um, mm. But, you know, they always describe themselves as, as, as very lucky to be where they're at. Yeah. Along, along their journey, I think, you know, having certain industry connections, and that's like prevalent in hip hop and all that, doesn't guarantee success. And I think uh -huh. the, the success that periphery, like, as of today, <laughs> that, that they have is is not, you know, it's just they had so many hurdles. I think there was a, a years ago, Misha Mansoor was literally getting slandered by a um, an executive at a Sumerian because they didn't want to write a certain type of music. Yeah, I heard about that. And the fact, and maybe this is the actual luck, fuck circumstance, right? If you, if like, if, if you really considered circumstance, like you, you yourself considered circumstance to be truly important, you wouldn't, you coming from the background that, that you come from, you wouldn't be where you are today and where you're going to be in the future. That is you know very true. I mean? That so, is very and, true. You know, we might have things that appear to be good circumstances and they're, they're not actually, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, uh, like, uh, like maybe, you know, I, I don't know. There's a million examples where things might look like, look, uh, like really awesome on the, on the outside, but you know, the, you're living in pain dealing with that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but what's really lucky is if you have a, like a certain sound or type of music that just resonates with a lot of people, mm -hmm. because what, what ends up happening. <laughs> That's is, a good and, point. Yeah, periphery thugged it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. They thugged it out. And like there's just like a whole bunch of people that really like the sound that they've been able to cultivate. Um, but it wasn't I don't think it was always like that. Um, but a lot of times bands, I mean, they have to there's like a compromise. There's gotta be a compromise somewhere because bills need to get paid. And yeah. oftentimes what artists will do is, you know, oh maybe if you know, if I add this catchy hook here this might resonate with with people here or, or or whatever you know and if you have to do that to like what's it called and that's a lot of people i think it's that's hard 
because you can't just like for whatever reason i don't know why how this stuff works uh your art can't just be be the end all be all like look at polypia they're so they're so blessed yeah they have a particular sound that is so widely accepted by dude so you mentioned just like just the act of people liking your music is just that is very true i mean that's how i feel right now like i feel like my music is very different and different doesn't mean good all the time different can be bad as well but like I'm even fortunate enough just to have the amount of people that like my music now because, like, I never thought that it would appeal to anyone because it was, like, very, very different. And, right. And, like, that, you're taking a fat-ass chance, especially if you're making something that is not necessarily commercial or, like, mm -hmm. widely viewed as a particular sound of the generation as something right, that's right. Just super different, like, and then people like it, like, so it's yeah i i know exactly what you mean and you 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 you're saying a lot of really good stuff right now it's just yeah. hard to go back and forth but i i see a lot of like crossover with me as well as an artist and you know um and when when it comes to periphery they were thugging it out like and you know they were dealing with that Samaria records thing and i'm glad they i'm glad they went independent it mm -hmm. kind of just it kind of makes sense with them you know they have a very like loyal fan base and right. I, I see them following them anywhere they go so right um, i think they still sell out like shows it's just they got like their core their core group of people that that really love what they're doing yeah and that's what it's about dude uh like if you have like a a core fan base and they really believe in your music like They'll 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 go at anywhere with you, you know, right. and you you don't really need that I need a label to like give you that. Especially, you know, Misha and all those guys, they have all the connections they need. You know, right. should, you know, they have all the booking promoters and and the touring managers, you know, like that's a lot of times like you know, people hop on these labels because of the connections and like the things that the you know that the labels can offer in terms of like touring and like getting on bigger shows and doing right. all those it things. Takes, it can take you to the next level. This is the part when we talk about how sick Chan is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are sick as fuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, okay. Chan, Chan is amazing, man. Chan, I, they, they've had a huge impact in, in just like the guitar world and the way people write music. I mean, they've had an impact on me. I, I get influences from like guitar guys and hip hop guys, and I feel like Chan, like, is a good cross between those two genres, and like, it's just the way that they wrote the riffs and just it was it just seemed like it was a when I listened to Chan, I got a lot of like joy and happiness from them. It was like right. it was just like serotonin to the max, and right. it was just I, I, I remember like. Um... I don't, I don't, uh, what was that, that video called, like, Poop Riff or whatever? Oh, yeah, Poop Riff, yep. <laughs> I think that was, like, one of my, like, I didn't really know who, who Mario was or anything like that. Like, I would listen to the band, I didn't really know who the guys were, and then Mario stuff started popping up on my YouTube Suggested. Shout out to YouTube Suggestions, bro. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> that algorithm does a great job. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Yeah, it's just it, it it's crazy. I think I I looked up to him for 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 many years. I I still can't play his riff, but that's yeah. that's neither here nor there. You know what I mean? But I yeah. can't play as good as, as he plays them. Oh, they're they they're, they're dope band, dude. They are. They really are. And I I wish them the best. I hope they come back one day. But uh, any musical endeavors that they do, I'm stoked to see it because I'm stoked to hear it because those guys are incredibly talented and I fucking love them so yeah they, they gotta they gotta start a metalcore band again uh, <laughs> yeah the, yeah the bone, dude? <laughs> yeah they were in a metalcore band <laughs> yep god damn I think it was Drew Pesolek and uh Mario I don't I don't know I don't know how how Sean emerged from that 
But that that was cool, dude. That was some cool stuff. Actually, I remember um like uh like after Mario left to each his own, they like did like a little um like crowdsourcing effort, and they had, they put out an album. And the album in the background, I think it's Oceanside, California. And I think I, I, I um, like some city across like some lake. And mm-hmm. I think in one of the music videos, I saw the same, the same location. It was cool as hell. So this is a, a two part question. What is it that in terms of, of your music, that creative, that expressive part of yourself? What is it that like take away all the barriers? Don't even think about that stuff. Don't even put it into the equation when you answer this question. When you think about Ando San at the highest level as a creative, what is it that you would like to accomplish? And then on the other side of that, like, how, where do you know, or like, what, what's your dream life look like outside of, outside of that particular, uh, out, outside of your creative self? Okay. I think just being aware of life, that makes mm-hmm. any sense. Being just existing and experiencing things and not worrying about like outside, like unnatural things. Mm -hmm. I want to be in this body and just feel life. Mm -hmm. And I, and if I had no barriers, that's something that I would want to do. I I would want to just be like in just a big flesh, just like a flesh ball of expression. (laughs) <laughs> mm, just and, whatever whatever wants to to come through you and express itself in the world we can just do so freely yes freely and and if i like if i wanted like i also have like big goals like i want i want to win a grammy one day like that's that's a goal of mine that that sometimes i think is not possible but if i had to like remove all the barriers of life right like that's something that like i really would want to do i think that's a a very uh that's a very admirable goal keep it at the forefront of your mind dude you never know what can happen yeah no you're totally right you're totally right and i need to my mindset needs to get better because you know i at times i find myself being more of a pessimist than optimist it, it it can it can it can be that way. Um, yeah. I've been going through that a little bit myself. The um, the past couple of years, I used to be so optimistic, and I and like I don't know what the hell happened, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm I've I've been working on it, and it's been getting better. So I think you know we all have our moments. I think it's natural. Maybe sometimes in life we're going to be more optimistic than others. You know what I mean? It's just. Yeah, you'll you're you you'll be fine. You acknowledge it. That's a, that's an important thing, you know. Yeah, and I think another thing. So, like I talked about, just being like just living life and just being like a just a big ball of expression, mm-hmm. and just like that. And I think another thing is just being present. Like, you know, ultimately, I want my music to feel itself. Like. Mm-hmm. That's why that's the one of the reasons why I've been working on like getting in the sync world and just like having like this the ability to create passive income and to because with passive passive income I've been able to focus more on my art right. and just I I have more time to think about these things right. like most people have to work I'm very fortunate like I'm very very fucking I bring up the word luck lucky because mm. I don't You're have, to, yeah, I don't have to work a nine to five. I don't have to work, like I, I don't have to do a bunch of gigs like most people. I mm. can, I can, I can kind of think about things more. And a lot of times, feel like humans are very artistic in nature. Mm. But it, you know, I feel like I don't know, we'll get. I'm, I'm just gonna mention it, but we don't need to get into it. That's why. Let's get cap- into it. Come on, I love this type of stuff. <laughs> That's dude. why capitalism. I don't get to have these types of conversations. <laughs> off I, I think capitalism takes it takes that away. Like it takes away your artistic freedom because you're always trying to make money. You're always trying to pay rent. You're trying to feed your kids. You never have time to have to create these questions in your head and and like explore yourself artistically. And mm-hmm. I have that time to do that. Um, right and but i find myself not living as much 
Mm-hmm. I'm not lit. I'm not like I saw. I was talking about talking to Annie about yesterday. Like, I need to go out more. Like, I need to like not even just going out and spending money, just being outside and just looking at things. Like mm-hmm. instead of being cooped up in the studio, like that, like experiencing life is also a part a part of the artistic journey and being an artist as well, because that right. can fuel uh, fuel the 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 inspiration with your music. So like I feel like that's what I need right now as a musician as a and an artist if that makes any sense. Right, right. It may, it makes a, it makes a, a whole lot of sense. I think um, I saw this in passing. There's a creator. I don't know too much about him. I guess he goes by Tifu, and he uh, I guess he like quit social media because he was just like I haven't like been going out. I haven't been like living life everything i've been doing has been behind a computer for all these years and he just wants to reconnect with life and that's kind of like that's kind of like where where we're at <laughs> in yeah. a society because we need to prioritize all these things but let me let me tell you something on because i don't even think you realize maybe you do i think you do <laughs> so let me not say you don't i don't want to tell you who the fuck am i to tell you <laughs> What 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 you what you know or don't know that when when you talk about passive income, I mean you're in you're in such a, a great place because you know in because a, a lot of a lot of what I do it, and, and think about it comes from it comes from the the business world right yeah the good part and the bad parts of it you know what I mean which is just a reflection of society um, mm-hmm. and you put yourself in a position where you validated right on numerous occasions so many different things you've created a sound that people like you've validated that you've been able to to work on music full time you validated that when like if you can generate an income doing what you love it's just a matter of scale right mm-hmm. so when i hear you talk about your 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 dreams you 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 know you have your you, I I think wealth real true wealth is time, regardless mm-hmm. irregardless of money it's time and connection. Yeah. Um, I think irregardless of 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 like uh like the financial component like you say you want a house in Pasadena, um and like to live comfortably in California it takes about eighty thousand dollars or 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 whatever you have the foundation. Look, I mean, dude, you're, you come, you come from, from a, 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 a poor background and you have created the foundation. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I'm going to be disrespectful now. You have created the foundation to take and scale that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's absolutely wonderful. And I think it's a great, um, it's a great, um, Especially in the music world, I think there's so much pessimism around labels and mm-hmm. even like the like even the 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 the, the, the parts outside of creating it can suck. I get that, but it depends. You know, what are you willing? Everything requires sacrifice. What sacrifices are you willing to make for uh for how important is something to you? What 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 are you willing to trade off for X Y and Z? And I think that's such an empowering message that you can spread. And you just by you living and being who you are, I mean, mm-hmm. it's such a, a wonderful thing. We might have to we might have to do a video together, dude. I got some I got some ideas. I don't know I don't know if that'd be something you'd be, you'd be about. I'm just gonna throw that out. No, I'm down. I'm down, dude. I I really want to do more YouTube videos, and I, I need to. I need. I want to. I want to do it. So I'm down. Hit me up. But yeah, man. It's it, it's it, it, it's cool. It's, it's really remarkable. It's really remarkable, and it's because of things like the internet that you're able to 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 do this type of type of stuff. Yeah. You know, and I I think in the future we're going to see more and more artists maybe not go go not going that label route, not shooting for that, and like figuring out like the the stuff behind the scenes for themselves. I think it's it's just remarkable. It's like it gives me chills thinking about it. I think about that shit all, all the time. It's yeah, so dude. Cool. it is cool. It's crazy, man. It's crazy to think about. Um, and <clears throat> I think another thing that I'm learning is just like, if someone wants to help, like you should accept it. Mm-hmm. 
and and just be earnest about it because like I used to not accept any sort of help from anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to say no because I've always wanted to like do things on my own, but like I don't know, like if when you're doing this music thing, it's 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 imperative to have like a, a good team and good people backing you. And right. Relationships are nothing in life comes without relationships. Yeah. I mean, really think about it. Everything. Everything. Every single thing. You can't you can't do any if it was just you in this world by yourself, what the hell are you gonna be doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's it's important, dude. Why do you think um why do you think it was something that you you rejected in the past? It was just because of ego and just like me trying to prove something to someone, you know? Yeah. It was just there. like <laughs> Yeah. So it it was like what's the word? Uh, yeah, it was just maybe a bit of narcissism. I don't even know. Like it's just I was just too full of myself, I I would assume. Right. You know? Right. I've I've been there. I think I think it's good that you realize that. Was it something that like was there a particular experience that turned that around or was it like just over time you um you just sort of figured out that what you were doing wasn't serving you? I think it was a bit of both. Um mm-hmm. and also just seeing what other people were doing, like like, huh, that guy's doing pretty good. Oh, he has this and so so he has a team with him. Oh, mm-hmm. it's like he's cooperating with people. Like he's 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 listening and he's like being reciprocative or she's being reciprocative. Like, or they are, and it's like, damn, it's like, okay, like how how can I put that? How can I take that and? try to gain something from it and rather not gain something from it but like also having like that sense of camaraderie helps uh, helps with your morale as well like having Mm -hmm. people that actually believe in you and like believe in your work um helps with like your i don't know helps with your belief in yourself because it's almost and this could sound bad or it could be good and it's almost like validating to right and validation isn't always a bad thing yeah it depends on what you're trying to validate if you if you if you're trying to bring something into the world and people like it that's that's amazing yeah if it's like, oh like i'm not afraid of the dark i need people to tell me i'm not afraid of the dark that's a different that's a different story but it, it's hard you know what i mean and i think it's because of like from from the artist's perspective, like you are literally sharing such an important part of yourself. Mm-hmm. And like when you pursue something like this, you are literally exposing like the most of your art. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's crazy. So it's hard not to it's hard not to to get entrenched with all the emotions that come with that particular mm-hmm. activity. Yeah, our, our, it, 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 it takes a lot. It, it, I have so much respect for, for, for people that can do that. Mm-hmm. Seriously, it's, 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 you gotta be strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. You know what I mean? You do. A lot man. of people don't have that in them. A lot yeah. of people don't have that in them. Yeah, that's very true. Well, dude, wait. So I got a couple of questions for you. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, we'll 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 end it here. And then let me, you know, remind me what you want to do, and you tell me your ideas for the video. Right. Happens. I'm gonna so, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. I think I. If we gonna have to, we'll talk about. It, we'll talk about it. I'm gonna. Yeah. I need to plan. I need to plan it out, and then I'll send you a, a document if you if you think it would be a good idea, or if you think, oh, this could be cool, but I want to change X, Y, and Z. Totally. Um, then let me know, and then we can we can we can start putting the pieces together. All right, let's let's get these questions, dog. All right, let's dude. Get- so, do you think? All right, so here's here's one of my questions. Do you think there will ever be a Tim Henson fatigue? A what? A Tim Henson fatigue. Fatigue. Yep. <laughs> here's the thing 
And this 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 particular this particular question or this particular answer doesn't have anything to do with Tim Henson. Mm-hmm. Um, I think creators or artists in general, there is a time frame in which they can um i think it's very rare that you get your people that like long haul super like you know what i mean like superstar you get 10 15 years maybe or you get like your whole life i think Mm -hmm. the internet has destroyed like and and what's his name fuck what's that guy's name uh, David Bowie, he talks about this with the internet. He says that it's kind of removed the mega icon, uh, and it's made artistry more diverse. Now, Tim is like going for superstardom right now. Mm-hmm. So, who knows? Maybe he might be in that small percentage of people that, you know, they can, like, and let me not use the word, like, career or whatever, but, like, you get to, like, I think people have their their peaks in any career, even outside of music. Mm. He might be able to surpass that. Who knows? I can't I can't predict the future. Who knows? There's some sick fucking guitar players out there, dude. Yeah. That have heard some <laughs> shit and they just haven't gotten that exposure yet. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Um, so there might be somebody that comes and dethrones him, but statistically speaking, even when you look at content creators. Like you get that bag, you better be investing it or something because you yeah. might get a five, ten, fifteen year run, and then after that, it's you know, the decisions that you made during that time or what or what's going to be what sustain you. So he might be he might be at his peak right now, um, but I think he is a really smart dude. Um, I think uh, like the same kind of situation with like um, with like periphery where they have like all these these things that, that that maybe contributed or 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 helped guide them. I think he has those sorts of things now. Like their first EP was recorded by Scott's dad. I have some information I found out that I had no idea about. So they've they've had support since they were teenagers to kind of build this build this thing. Um so you know I'm making this a complicated answer. No, it's okay. I, I, I I'm just trying to like consolidate I'm thinking out loud. Yes. Um, I think it's possible that he's able to reach a very high level and stay there, but I think that that's probably unlikely. And just like all other artists, all other creators, all 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 people that are expressing themselves and 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 get a voice on the internet in some way or even outside of it, I think that it comes with a it comes with a time frame for all 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 of them, everyone. So who knows? I think the odds are that he's probably this is his moment now, and then it, it might not be in the future. I think that's what the odds are, and there's a very small chance that it goes beyond that. Uh, if that makes sense, I was thinking out sense. loud. Sometimes I think out loud. It makes sense. Yeah, I think Tim Henson is a genius, and I think I think he's going to be here to stay. In my opinion, I think he's going to be up there like with Steve Vai. And those guys, you know, and I can see it. I can, I, see, I can it. see it. I, I can really see it. And I think he's going to be kind of like a household name. It's just a lot of the boomers don't really fuck with him that much. But <clears throat> but it's all, you know, he he's he's attaching himself to the newer generation of guitar players. And that's like one of the most important things to do. Right. He And, and oh, I, I have so many conflicting thoughts with this. I know. That's why. That's exactly why I asked you because I I know I know. <laughs> yeah, I think he's the closest there's been in a long time to reaching that, but you just never know with the internet. Mm, dude. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. You know what I mean? I don't. I can't. I can't predict that. Who knows? Who yeah, knows you what can't. can happen? You can't. You, you can can't predict it. Canceled, yeah. You know what I mean? Or yeah, yeah. That's just how I feel. Like I feel like I feel like he's he's going to be here to stay, but you never know. You just never know what will happen because the internet is very unpredictable and things happen. You know, and yeah, it's very true. Right. Who who knows? I think I think like I said, I think he's the closest to anyone else who's been in a while. But 
like it's just the internet is such a crazy thing. But regardless, I, I think the I think his impact while he's doing whatever it is that he's doing now is is I mean that even if he might not be at the the forefront, um, I think that he like the the impact that he's had on a lot of players and their style and the new sounds that are going to emerge and develop from that is going to go on for for generations at least. And this is going to sound crazy, and this is part of the reason why I, 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 I'm, I'm unsure about the longevity of the situation that he's in. He's going to be good regardless. You know, what I mean, I mean, it, regardless, he's going to have made a tremendous impact. He's going to have done really well. Uh, do you remember like Misha was like the biggest fucking thing, like after P2 dropped, mm-hmm. and that literally like all the the metal bands literally started to re- reshape their sound after periphery sound on p2 yeah and misha i mean that was that was huge and like misha sort of lost i don't want to say lost but he stopped being at the forefront of that scene but like what he did kind of remained and allowed new artists and people to emerge from that even mm-hmm. guys like periphery uh polyphia like the the, the 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 ep that put them on the map was like you can tell it was super inspired by periphery so who knows? Yeah. I wish him the best. I think he, he has the potential. And if I if I had a conversation with him, I'd tell him, "Yo, keep that shit going, dog." <laughs> uh, but, but I I I don't know, and I and I'm not. I can't predict the future. You know what I mean? Nah, here I hear you. I hear you. All right, one last question. Um, what other conversations should the guitar community uh, be having? That's a great question. Those conversations will come. Mm-hmm. I think I think right now, um, I've been trying to, you know, get myself in a position where I'm I'm a lot more consistent with making videos. Yeah. Um like uh I I put one out <clears throat> January and it didn't really get a ton of exposure until it just randomly like got picked up by the algorithm one day. Yeah. Um and I think that as as I continue to put out content, I think um I, I think there's just gonna be an increase in whatever conversation needs to, to, to be had. Mm-hmm. Um I don't have like a particular uh like unless it's like something that empowers you, I don't mm-hmm. really have a particular end goal. I yeah. just want to make content that's based around um, life, business, um, philosophy, and how mm-hmm. that shit relates to the guitar. So I mm-hmm. think those conversations will come up, and I hope that the platform that I'm creating one day um, will be a place where people feel comfortable and open to express those types of ideas. So I don't really know what conversations need to be had, but I think that when we get there, um that when we get to that point whatever needs to be said or discussed will be said and discussed i don't know if, if that makes sense it makes total sense i understand but when it comes it comes <laughs> what was that when it comes it will come uh, who knows we'll, we'll, we'll see i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put myself out there and and, and just hope for the best <laughs> dude i think your channel is gonna do really well and like i said this is like the stuff you make is very unique and there's no one else doing it and i feel like this is what the guitar community needs so i think you're going to do great on youtube you already are i think you're on a good trajectory and i'm excited any algorithm help (laughs) at all i'm excited dude i'm excited (laughs) and i'm gonna post this so i usually post this just straight onto my patreon but i'll post this entire thing on youtube uh, just so people, just so the public can watch. Oh, that 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 would be sick. And then uh, I think we definitely have to have a uh, uh, a conversation. I think I'll I'll do it while I'm recovering. I was, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a um do a video this week because like like the surgery I'm getting is with my mouth. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, I think. I'll, I'll write something up and then we can we can keep it going dude you're a cool fucking dude 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You're, Thanks, you're a cool dude, and it was this, this was this was dope. I I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to to uh, to, to uh, have a conversation and talk about this type of stuff. This is what I love, and I I, I don't really get to this is literally all I think about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, cool that that I get to talk to somebody about this type of stuff. Seriously, I'm really grateful for it. Oh, I'm grateful for you too. I'm gonna keep looking out for your content, and guys, check out Ben Seraphin. His YouTube channel is your name, right? It's your name. Yeah, it's Ben Seraphin. Okay, this is yeah, Ben Seraphin. You can subscribe to him right now. I'll post links in the description of all his content and whatnot and all of this information. And dude, I really appreciate you being here and talking to me. It was really fun. Right, for sure. I appreciate it, Ando. Oh, right, before dude. you go, I have one I have one one question for you. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> one question for you. Favorite food. Ah, it's probably between Japanese food and Mexican food. Okay, I respect it. I respect it. And uh, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna see. Uh, I'm I definitely have to like flip some things around on my uh my uh, calendar, but uh I might I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make that trip to to Cali with uh, one of my buddies. Dude, um, he, I, he's a dope guitar player. I got um, you on guest list because that's right. <laughs> really gnarly. Yeah, it it would be cool. I think it would be cool, and then I definitely I think I'm gonna need to try uh, a, a taco out there for sure. You know? Yeah, I mean? dude, definitely. All right, thank you. All right, man. All right, dude. Yeah, have, have a good rest one. of your day. Peace. Yeah, you too. Be safe. Take care, Ando. Bye. Bye.